Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Play On podcast. This is a football edition in which we are going to review the second of the All-Ireland Football Semi-Finals of 2021. I have Luke here with me to go through the Tyrone versus Kerry game. Tyrone winning after extra time to set up a first ever Tyrone versus Mayo All-Ireland Final. A very good game, a very, very enthralling finish. Colin McShane's late goal, a huge play for Tyrone. Extra time was needed, obviously, to separate both teams. Conor McKenna's goal, crucial in extra time. Tyrone, bit of a dodgy strategy to just sit deep in the second period of extra time, but it pays dividends. Tyrone into the final. Luke, what did you make of this game? Yeah, look, I suppose uh, probably not a lot of people predicted it. We saw kind of like the uh, the turmoil kind of in the Tyrone camp between all the positive cases and everything as well. And I think a lot of people were kind of uh, fearful that maybe the players, that when they did come back in, they wouldn't be kind of at full fitness because after kind of having uh, COVID for, for a kind of sustained period of time. But uh, yeah, look, they, it, did, it didn't seem to really have any long-term impact on them. And ultimately, I suppose, as the game wore on, Tyrone kind of looked the fitter of the two teams. And uh, I suppose that was demonstrating that first half of extra time where they absolutely just completely overran Kerry there. And uh, yeah, look, I suppose circumstances kind of helped Tyrone in the end. And uh, I would argue that their the strength of their bench probably won it. Whereas then you see for Kerry, once Clifford went off, I think uh, the scoring threats uh, really dried up. That's, that's, very, uh, that's very true. I think Clifford's injury was a huge moment in the game, obviously. I think it came from the definite, you know, the spot where he looked a bit, you know, done after was the goal chance that Kerry had. I think it was Adrian Spillan that got through, or it might have been Sean O'Shea that got his hands on the ball, hand passed it across to Clifford where it looked like it was going to set up for a panned goal. Niall Morgan read it, jumped up, managed to get his fist to the ball, but he also, I think he banged legs with David Clifford. And that to me looked like that was the cause of his injury. Yeah, I think so. And uh, yeah, well, you can see that uh, from that point on, he was kind of cramped up the whole time as well. And yeah, he played on to the end of uh, normal time. But uh, for him to kind of be lost was, uh, was a huge, huge loss for Kerry, I suppose, because he'd been playing very, very well in that game. He'd scored four from play, eight in total. I suppose then after that, Tyrone just completely took over. And we saw some kind of huge performances in extra time, particularly from Colin McShane. And I think uh, even Matty Donnelly's influence kind of completely grew once we got to that uh, stage of the game. Yeah, Matty Donnelly was outstanding in my opinion. I think his role, the experience that he has, just even little moments when he was dispossessing Kerry, when he was forcing turnovers, even then at the end when Tyrone were hanging onto the ball and it looked like Frank Burns was about to be turned over, he got it back to Matty Donnelly and Matty Donnelly read, in my opinion, that Sean O'Shea was going to dive in got to the ball, turned his back to it, let O'Shea take him down, get the free out. That's just the experience that he has. He's absolutely crucial to Tyrone now. And you were, da- you were dead right about Cahill McShane because his impact off the bench was absolutely fantastic. The goal that he got was just pure poacher's instinct. And then, you know, a couple of class points, including Tyrone's last point in the first period of extra time, which turned out to be their game winner. Do you think he has to start the final now or do you think he's better as an impact sub? Uh, look, yeah, I think it's going. I I would start him. I think that uh, I think he's still used their best forward, and uh, yeah, look, he's really been eased kind of back into it after kind of the 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 long term injury. But uh, oh, look, based off that performance, I'd have him. I'd have him playing as much game time as possible. So that would mean, yeah, that I'd be looking to start him. So uh, yeah, look, but that that possibility allows Matty Donnelly to kind of go for it at the field. He could go to midfield maybe or something like that. So look, they uh, yeah, they have plenty of options really. So I would uh, yeah, I'd expect uh. I'd expect that to happen, and I'd expect yeah, for uh, McShane to be playing full forward in the final against Mayo. Yeah, I agree with you. I'd start him. I think I agree with you that he's their best forward. He's definitely just adds something different, and his his sheer power and size, he would definitely make Mayo have to think about you know putting someone man marking him, and that's crucial, you know, to then give more freedom to the likes of Darren McCurry and the likes of Maddie Donnelly. So let's get into the actual game itself you know, quarter by quarter. The first quarter I thought was very even. One of the key moments that I want to talk to you about was the 22nd minute, Kerry's goal chance. You know, it did end up in the back of the net, but Stephen O'Brien was inside the square. Sean O'Shea, like, he could have scored the goal himself, in my opinion. He decided to give it to Stephen O'Brien. That was a massively missed opportunity for Kerry, in my opinion. Yeah, look, well, I think it was just, it was kind of poor decision-making, I think, on both kind of, uh, on both parts. Like, O'Shea probably 
needs to look up and and see where Stephen O'Brien is. But the fact is, there's no reason for Stephen O'Brien to be standing in the square at that point. He knows he's unmarked at the back post, and he knows that he's able to take, if, if O'Shea is to play that pass, that he needs to be standing outside. So for him to be standing inside the square when the pass is done is kind of uh, staggering, really, for an inter-county player, where he could have simply just stood outside the square statically and waited for that pass to come and then for finished with an empty net. So, uh, yeah, look, I wouldn't completely blame O'Shea. I think O'Shea kind of got a bit of a nudge and might have been off balance taking on the shot. So, uh, yeah, look, I, I, I'd i probably put it on Stephen O'Brien's positioning why that goal was kind of a, a poor execution on Kerry's part. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that there's no reason why O'Brien should be standing in the square. I think he has to be aware of where he is. That's that's game intelligence, and he lacked a bit of it there. And the kicker then for that is two minutes later, you know, a brilliant Tyrone move. Peter Hart, Niall Sludden both involved. Brilliant, you know, through the hands work. It, it ends up with Conor McKenna, who slips it into the back of the net. So now you've got a six-point turnaround where Kerry should have got a goal, and then two minutes later, Tyrone get their first goal. Yeah, look, and they Tyrone, they really carved open the Kerry defence there particularly, and the... Uh... It was probably the ease in which they could kind of do it. It was a very, it was a great free flow move, but from Kerry's perspective, a very poor goal to concede, I think. And uh, that kind of sums it up. It was kind of a, a game where Tyrone took their two goal chances, and uh, essentially Kerry left behind an awful lot of goals. And uh, I suppose that's kind of uh, the reasoning behind of why uh, why we got the outcome we did, I suppose. And uh, the kind of direct run from Tyrone did seem to cause problems the whole way. You look as well, all the lads come up from the full back line, the entire full back line for Tyrone scoring in this game. So, uh, yeah, the, the runners kind of from deep did do a lot, an awful lot of harm. And, uh, yeah, that, that seems to be the area that teams have been able to get at Kerry for the last while. And, look, Peter Keane hasn't sorted it. So, Kerry, you know, they fought back. They got back into the game. They got level after the goal, and then Niall Morgan's free right on half time. He was a huge distance out. Is that one of the best frees that we've seen this year? Yeah, look, I, I think it's one of the best frees I've ever seen. Like, I, I couldn't believe that he was going for it because I'd say it was about three or four yards beyond the, the halfway line with the, the markings for the throw in. And uh, yeah, look, I, I thought it was just time was up kind of and he was going to try and just uh, have a have half a go I suppose but to see kind of uh, like that that strike it's just kind of it's it's next level really we've seen kind of begging kicking some scores like from staggering distances but I think that's that's the most impressive one I've seen and uh, yeah like I I haven't seen a a free being scored from outside that distance before like I'd like to challenge anyone who's listening here to uh, try and take an example of a further out score than that so yeah look that was a what about Roy Begging? I don't know if I've ever seen Begging score from further in there, though. The, I, th- I thought the, the league game, Monaghan against Dublin. Yeah, look, I, I, again, look, he definitely, look he back definitely back has it. Well. He definitely has it in the locker, I think. But uh, I didn't think that Noah Morgan had it in his locker to kick a free from that distance. It was a real, like, tour de force from him. Yeah, it was just uh, that was kind of, uh, that kind of sums up there. And in a day kind of when, uh, they, he probably wasn't his best day in the kickouts ever, and it was it was tough enough, I suppose, for him at certain times. But uh, yeah, that kick was absolutely huge, kind of, and uh, yeah, it, it was some boost for Toronto kind of going into the halftime break, knowing that they just nailed this score, kind of. So uh, yeah, look, it was a big, big moment in the game, and uh, yeah, yeah, and it just kind of it just sums up the kind of the freakish talent levels that are on display in these games. Yeah, I agree with that, and I think. Again, moving on to the next sort of key moment in the game, I think was the 44th minute. That was Killian Spillane's goal chance. I just got immediate flashbacks to Conor Gormley's block against Armand in 2003. The determination and the effort and the willingness to put his body on the line from Peter Hart, that's outstanding. And it was a fantastic block. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I suppose maybe Spillane was a little bit slow to kind of get the shot off. But uh, yeah, it was a fantastic block, really. And uh, it just kind of summed up. This was kind of typical Tyrone, kind of where that they left absolutely everything on the line. Kind of the intensity that they brought defensively into this game. So they uh, completely uh, took Kerry by surprise, I suppose, with the level that they were playing at. And uh, they were just far more intense, the two teams. And as well, that's probably epitomised by Peter Hart's block and that was an absolutely crucial moment again though because the, it, it was the goals the scoring out of the goals was ultimately the deciding factor between these two teams Yeah I agree and that brings us up to the 66 minute in my opinion as the next sort of key moment that was the goal chance for Kerry 
that Niall Morgan managed to get to to deny David Clifford, potentially injuring Clifford in the process. Tom O'Sullivan put the ball over the bar when the ball came out to him. He was just there waiting for the break. That put Kerry two points in front. And to be completely honest, I thought Kerry were going to win the game from that point. But then three minutes later, Cahill McShane's goal. Talk me through this one. Yeah, look, it was. It, I think it was probably deserved based on the kind of uh, the performance that we'd seen from the two teams so far. I thought Tyrone were just as good in normal time as Kerry. I didn't feel like Kerry warranted a two point lead at the time. And I suppose the ball just ultimately came to Derek Canavan, who kind of had a load of space and uh, probably rushed his shot, really. It was a pretty poor enough effort at goal. And I think it was. It was, I think Shane Ryan in, in goals for Kerry was so surprised kind of at the, uh, at where the, the ball kind of went that he kind of rebounded off him anyway, straight back to Carl McShane, who then, who slammed it kind of home. But it was uh, probably not the prettiest goal ever. But uh, yeah, look, it was well worked into the build up to get it to Derek Hanavan. And then ultimately from there, got a bit of fortune. But yeah, look, McShane finished it well. Yeah, but if you're talking about, you know, poor defensive setups, how in the last minute of the game are Kerry being undone by a simple hand pass over the top? You know, that reminded me a lot of the hand pass over the top to Jack McCaffrey in the 2019 All-Ireland Final, the first game. It was just a simple hand pass over the top of Derek Hanneman's head and he had acres of space in front of him right down at the Kerry goal. I'm thinking, like, I get that you, you're, you're focusing more on your attack, which you are so clearly blessed with, with the likes of Clifford and O'Shea, but... When you are up by two points in the last minute, the last thing you want to be doing is to leave so much space right in front of your goal. I, I don't know how they left all that space there. Yeah, I think that's completely fair. And uh, yeah, look, but this this was kind of the same issue, I suppose, in the first half. It was actually kind of similar kind of goals that uh, that ultimately that Kerry kind of were caught out by uh, a just kind of a fast-paced kind of hand-passing move where... The, where players got ultimately drawn to the ball and then a simple pop pass over, over the head is collected and then from there is the goal chance. So it's, look, it's I think it's kind of, uh, it's staggering stuff really, kind of Kerry. They've kind of been kind of plagued by these kind of defensive issues the whole time, like a lack of a solid spine in their team and they've, they've been ran on very, very easily. So like you even look, the warning signs are already there earlier in the National League this year when you think about the Dublin game where they pretty much outplayed Dublin, but only drew that game because they conceded four goals. So, uh, yeah, look, they, they needed to fix this. And I suppose you can maybe put down to Tony Buckley maybe leaving the, the camp a few years ago and just no adequate replacement ever coming in to, uh, to make them a bit kind of tougher to beat. Yeah, I think his influence on the Kerry defence was absolutely massive. I remember the first final in 2019 in particular, they were outstanding that day. And Buckley's influence was all over them that day. Kerry, you know, fought the way back. Obviously, they, they managed to get extra time. And going into extra time, you know, Tyrone 2-11, Kerry 17 points. Tyrone looked like they could have gone on to win the game. They went one point in front. Darren McCurry, who had a bit of a mixed bag of a game, obviously he got black carded, but then he came back on, kicked Tyrone into the lead. And then David Clifford was fouled. I thought, to be honest, it was a pretty soft free, especially considering, you know, the magnitude of giving a free at that point. Clifford slots it over, extra time. Who did you think was going to win extra time, if you're being honest, at that point? Or did you think it was completely 50-50? Yeah, well, look, I think, I think well, well, once once we saw that Clifford went off, I think, like, a, a lot of kind of, there was a lot of fear kind of for Kerry about where the scores were going to come from. And, uh yeah, look, I think that that pretty much proved kind of to be uh, to be correct in that first period of uh, of extra time where they just got completely blown away by Tyrone. I suppose there was no kind of scoring threat up front. The other kind of thing for Kerry was I know that they subbed Tommy Walsh and uh, Killian Spillane on, but they were the only uh, attacking options pretty much in the bench there. They kind of had other wing forwards they could bring on, but they were the only two inside forwards. Even and sure, Tommy Walsh as well probably isn't even famed for a scoring threat as well. So. The kind of the lack of uh, attacking options on the bench kind of like proved when ultimately Gainey had to come back on after pretty much playing a full game. So uh, yeah, look, I, those kind of factors were suggesting towards Tyrone, especially when you consider the the players that they've been they'd been uh, springing off their bench as well. So uh, yeah, yeah, I think maybe if if Clifford played on, it might I still might have been leaning towards Kerry an extra time, but uh, once I kind of saw that, I think. Uh, 
I think most people as well would have been uh, tipping thrown, especially with the way the momentum of the game had gone. Yeah, I agree. And especially with the the beginning of the first period of extra time, there were a crucial three minutes where Tyrone hit one, two, two Colin McShane points, one from a free, one from play, and then Conor McKenna's goal. Bit of a bizarre goal, like to be completely honest. The, like a shot from Kieran McGeary goes high up into the air. I think it's Ty Morley who's wrestling with one of the Tyrone forwards and Morley just kind of swings a leg at it. It comes straight back out to McKenna and he buries it in the corner of the net. That was a bizarre bit of defending. Yeah, completely. And uh, it just kind of summed up the game. It was just, it was such a messy kind of goal as well. And there was kind of uh, like the, the other thing I felt from the game in the whole, I know we're kind of jumping back into the overall thing, but the amount of turnovers were just ridiculous kind of. And uh, I suppose the, you can even think of the, the first goal for Conor McKenna was with David Clifford being kind of intercepted easily. But that passage of play, I think there was maybe three or four times both teams kind of squandered possession really, really easily, just lost it, ran into tackles and just had it turned over straight away. And yeah, there was just a looseness kind of about the game, looseness in the hand pass and looseness in all sorts of kind of distribution, I suppose. And uh, yeah, I, I suppose that kind of, that looseness around the game was ultimately, like ultimately summed up by what was a terrible piece of dependent really kind of, and uh, anyone kind of watching, any coaches at home training, uh, a young t- kind of team, like they'd be saying straight away, like they wouldn't allow any any of their players to defend like that. So it was, uh, yeah, it was a it was a bizarre kind of goal. It was a really poor effort at a shot. I think it was, uh, I think it was uh, Connor Myler or Kieran McGeary that took the shot on, and uh, yeah, it was going nowhere near anyway. And uh, yeah, ultimately out of nothing, I suppose Tyrone got that the, the the goal that ultimately proved as what was going to be the score that uh, that won them the game. Yeah, and you know, Tyrone's obviously their last point of the the match in total came, you know, on the in the 80th minute of the game. Carl McShane got another point for him. He was absolutely crucial, as we've said. That came after back-to-back scores for Kerry by Paul Murphy. That score in particular was fantastic. And Jamie O'Connor got another point as well. And McShane put Tyrone four points in front again. And you know, at that point, I fully believed Toronto were going to go on to win, but I started to get a little bit more nervy. You know, they were only three points up going into the second period of extra time. And then they just decided to sit off Kerry. It was a bit weird because I was thinking, you know, you're really just going to invite them onto you like that. And I know we're talking about a good strategy, but if Tommy Walsh's shot goes over at the end, are we criticising Toronto now? Uh, look, yeah, I think I think we probably will be because uh, what there were five points up at extra time, half time, and look, it, as soon as the goal went in, you could see straight away that the entire team retreated and that they had nobody with inside uh, the carry forty five. So uh, yeah, look, if if it, it ultimately they won by uh, that they did win the game by a point, so they were probably proved correct. But if uh, Tommy Walsh knocked that over, I think uh, yeah, obviously there's a lot of questions will be asked, and like especially if they didn't come out the right side of the penalty shootout, but. Uh, yeah, look, I think it was probably negative enough tactics. We saw a similar enough thing against Monaghan in that game where Throne ground out the one-point win by offering kind of no attacking threat whatsoever for the last while in the game. But, uh, yeah, look, the, all they care about is the, the the outcome at the end. They don't care if it's pretty or not at the like in, in how, they, how they do it. But, uh, yeah, look, that's what they did, and they won the game. So, uh, look, you can't critique that. Agreed. And does this vindicate the decision to get rid of Mickey Hart and bring in Brian Dewar and Fergal Logan? Well, look, I it, it's a hard one because, like, obviously, uh, Mickey Hart's done so much for the county, maybe, and uh, it's very difficult to kind of to, to critique somebody like that that's had so much success with three All-Ireland wins. Maybe it just got a little bit stale for them and the setup there and uh, fresh faces were required. And, look, they you have to say to Fergal Logan and Brian Dewar have done a great job so far. And, uh, you know what, they're going to they're gonna be very, very optimistic going into the All-Ireland final. And I think that uh, they have a really, really good chance of, of winning an All-Ireland that I don't think many people would have tipped them for this year at all. Yeah, I agree. I think, for me, obviously... I nailed my colours to the mass. I said that I thought Kerry were going to win the All-Ireland this year. I fully believed that they were going to win from day one. I thought Dublin didn't have the hunger that they used to have. Then when Dublin got knocked out by Mayo, I was thinking, right, now it's Kerry's to win even more. And just for them to lose to Tyrone, is this a bit of a disappointing year for Kerry? Yeah, this is a hugely disappointing year for Kerry. I think uh, I think looking at the way that the, the Dublin-Mayo game went the last day, 
I think they would have been sitting up straight away and seeing that this is their best chance of winning all Ireland that they've had in years. So, uh, yeah, look for all. It, there was nearly this kind of air of uh, this kind of sense, I suppose, around the country that all Kerry Kerry just had to get through this their own game. They get another game of uh, a, a bit of match fitness into them, and then they play Mayo in the final, and they'd be fully expected to win that. So. Uh, for them to not kind of get past Tyrone at the start, like, the, like it has to be huge disappointing. And uh, it's going to be a very long winter for uh, Peter Keane if he doesn't uh, make any decision on his uh, Kerry future in the, in the next coming weeks. I agree, yeah. I, I think Kerry, with that crop of players, they have to be winning all Irelands, like the likes of Clifford and O'Shea and all the minor all Irelands that they won. Like they won five minor all Irelands in a row. As good as the Dublin success was, they came nowhere near that level of success. So there's really no excuse for Kerry to not be producing, you know, the elite senior team in the country. And do you think that Peter Keane is the man for Kerry still? Uh, no, I don't. I, I don't think... Uh, look, I think he. The, there was the year that they ran Dublin very, very close, I suppose, in the all Ireland final. Probably should have won it the first day. But look, his, his, kind of, his time in charge of Kerry has been kind of summarised by kind of disappointment I suppose he's very lucky to kind of keep in the job after the, losing the Cork last year and look at, uh, after this year kind of with the expectation there would have been the county especially with the dubs gone I think he's going to really really struggle to keep that job and uh, you kind of even if you look kind of at the, the way Kerry play and stuff like that with the talent that's available to them all they just need is just a competent kind of defensive system and look, they're going to score enough with that forward line. So, look, without that kind of competent defensive system, you're not going to win in all Ireland. And look, that's pretty much proved to be. So, uh, yeah, look, I think I think he's in big trouble up there. And, uh, yeah, I, I do think the Kerry are going to start looking elsewhere. Now that Tyrone are into the final, they play against Mayo. Obviously, we're going to do a full All-Ireland preview. Who do you tip here now? Because Mayo, obviously, they have a bit of a fear factor towards Kerry. They've been hurt so many times by Kerry in the past, particularly in All-Ireland finals. Dublin as well, obviously, took a little while for them to kind of get over the voodoo that was linked to Dublin. They won't really have too much fear towards Tyrone, but Tyrone equally have no fear towards Mayo. Who do you tip to win this game now if you really had to pick one yeah look I, I, I'm finding this really really hard I suppose to kind of uh, to predict this final I think uh, yeah like in, in a way kind of you're looking at Mayo against Dublin and like they, they probably have to be favourites now after kind of that performance and everything but uh, we don't really know where Dublin are at this year I think Dublin have been pretty poor so far this year and uh, what was the the three point win for, for Mayo really a good representation of uh of uh, I suppose of, of where they're at, but uh, yeah, look, I I am really find it difficult, I suppose, to uh, to pick it out. I suppose I'd probably maybe lean to Mayo by a point, but uh, yeah, like I, I I wouldn't be confident at all, kind of making any sort of predictions for this final. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Tyrone to win the game. I think there is something about Mayo and All Ireland finals that they think doesn't matter who they're playing. They can't seem to get over the line in the All-Ireland final. Don't get it wrong, though. As as a neutral now, obviously, in the game, and as someone who just appreciates the, the world-class footballers that they are, I would love to see the likes of Lee Keegan, Aidan O'Shea. I'd love to see them win in All-Ireland. I think they thoroughly deserve it for the effort and commitment that they've put in over the years. But I'm going to go with Tyrone. So we'll have a bit of a new perspective for the All-Ireland final preview I'm going to go with why I think Tyrone are going to win and you can go with why you think Mayo are going to win and we'll both try and argue our case so that will be what's coming up for our All-Ireland final preview guys we hope you enjoyed our All-Ireland semi-final review Tyrone into the final for the first time since 2018 they will play against Mayo for the first time ever in the GEA in an All-Ireland football final Luke thanks for coming on no worries Okay, guys, thanks for listening to this episode of the Play On GAA podcast. We hope you enjoyed and take care, guys.